Jordan Ellenberg, Shape, The Hidden Geometry of Information, Biology, Strategy, Democracy, and Everything Else. Embark on a fascinating journey with Shape, The Hidden Geometry of Information, Biology, Strategy, Democracy, and Everything Else by Jordan Ellenberg, where you will explore how geometry influences various aspects of our lives, from the seemingly mundane to the highly complex. Discover how geometry can help make sense of seemingly unrelated questions like the distance between actors, the geometry of a deck of cards, or even the shape of a straw. Throughout the summary, you'll also delve into topics such as random walks, Markov chains, and geometric progressions, and how they govern intricate phenomena such as pandemics and even games. The Universal Language of Geometry Geometry is the study of measuring distance between two points, and wherever there's a notion of distance, there's geometry. It's not just a subject for students, but a universal language that could apply to almost anything. For instance, places, people, and even decks of cards can be assigned a geometry. Each field is characterized by its metric system, the number used to signify the distance between any two points. There's the crowfly metric system that looks at two points on a map, alphabetical lists for cities, and many more. Actors have their own metric system as well, the co-star distance, where two actors form a link when they appear in a film together. The distance between any two actors is the smallest number of links that joins them. Also, a standard deck of cards has a geometry just like actors, but at a much wider scale. The points in a deck of cards are all the possible ways a standard 52-card deck can be arranged. However, unlike actors, the distance between the different configurations of a deck of cards is measured by shuffling. If you can shuffle the deck once to get another, specific order, those two orders are linked. The distance between them is the number of riffle shuffles it takes to get to one from the other. Geometry is a universal language that conceptually applies to anything that has a notion of distance, be it a patch of land, a set of horses, or even the stars in space. The Geometry of Straw Holes Have you ever wondered how many holes a straw has? The answer is not as straightforward as it may seem, but geometry can help us find a solution that unwinds all the paradoxes. According to topology, a straw has one hole, while a pair of pants has two. The question becomes even trickier when we consider an inflated balloon, but by accepting that things can feel weird in math, we can reach the correct conclusion. The key message from all this is that geometry asks us to start with an intuition and then modify it with logic. Understanding the Principle of the Random Walk Sir Ronald Ross's study of a mosquito's flight path led to the birth of the random walk theory that helps us understand paths through space. The principle also applies to the stock market, where the price of a bond is treated as a random walk through space. The more choices the mosquito has to make to fly in a particular direction, the more likely it becomes that the insect will end up where it started. Similarly, a bond is most likely to end up at exactly the price at which it started, making it more likely for traders to make no money at all than gain or lose. The Ubiquity of Markov Chains Markov chains can be observed in various spaces, from a literal mosquito-infested bog to language sequences, where variables are connected. In the early 20th century, while Sir Ronald Ross was pondering mosquitoes, Andre Markov was also fascinated with these insects, but not with their random decision-making. Instead, Markov explored the idea of a mosquito whose flight decisions depended on its previous choice. The results of his research, now known as the Markov chain, can be applied to different spaces, be it literal or abstract. A typical Markov chain starts with a mosquito having two options for flight, bog 0 or bog 1. If the mosquito gets enough blood from either bog, it prefers to stay put. If it starts in bog 0 and there is a 90% chance of staying, it may shift to bog 1 with the remaining probability. However, in bog 1, there may be less blood, causing the mosquito to be 80% inclined to stay and 20% inclined to go back to bog 0. This decision-making process results in a correlated series of consecutive stays at each bog, 
giving rise to a fixed probability of one-third at bog 1. Thus, Markov chains arise due to interconnected variables that influence each other in different spaces. Markov chains can also appear in language, where each sequence of consonants and vowels is not equally likely to occur. Eugene Onegin by Alexander Pushkin and the childhood years of Begrov, grandson by Sergei Aksakov have statistically different Markov chains. One follows a sequence of vowels only 12.8% of the time, while the other does so 55.2% of the time. Overall, Markov chains are ubiquitous and worth analyzing to better understand how variables relate in different spaces. Pandemics and Geometric Progressions Sir Ronald Ross, a mathematician, aimed to quantify the spread of disease and other phenomena through geometric progressions. Geometric progressions differ from arithmetic progressions as their term's difference is not constant but based on a complicated number called an eigenvalue. Geometric progressions are characterized by slow periods of growth followed by exponential explosions. Pandemics follow this pattern and spread according to a variable called R0 that describes the number of new infections caused by one infected person. When R0 is less than 1, the pandemic is undergoing exponential decay. Similarly, other contagions spread according to the same rules. The Geometry of Games Discover how the geometric properties of games can help us predict outcomes by exploring the rules and strategies of different games, including Nim, Checkers, Connect 4, and Chess. Have you ever wondered why games like Checkers, Connect 4, and Chess are considered trees in terms of geometry? It turns out that games are classified as trees if they meet certain criteria, such as having two players taking turns, ensuring that the outcomes aren't determined by random chance, and always ending after a finite number of steps. In all of these games, one of three things must be true, the first player has a strategy that ensures she always wins, the second player has a strategy that ensures he always wins, or every perfectly played game ends in a draw. Therefore, it's possible to predict the outcome of games by examining their geometry. Let's take the game Nim as an example. In Nim, two players sit in front of piles of stones, and take turns removing stones from one pile at a time. The player who takes the last stone wins. By drawing a tree diagram for the game, it turns out that one particular configuration of Nim is always a loss for the first player, regardless of their moves. The same principle can be applied to other games like checkers, which has a root that is a draw. By exploring the rules and strategies of games, we can understand their mathematical properties and predict their outcomes. Whether you're a fan of strategy games or simply curious about the math behind them, the geometry of games will fascinate and enlighten you. How Machines Learn Using Gradient Descent Imagine yourself as a mountaineer trying to reach a high peak without a map. Similarly, machines use a method called gradient descent to climb the ladder to accuracy by identifying the direction with the steepest slope. In the context of machine learning, the goal of computers is to learn the correct strategy for classifying images. The machine's wrongness score allows it to measure the success of its strategy while gradient descent enables it to keep tweaking the strategy until it reaches its optimum efficiency. Gerrymandering, how politicians use math for their benefit. In 2018, Republicans won the majority in the Wisconsin State Assembly even though the state as a whole voted Democrat. How did this happen? Gerrymandering Republicans used computer software to create a districting map that would benefit their party politically. By eking out victories in a lot of districts, they were able to gain the majority. Gerrymandering is unfair, but how can you prove it? One way is to calculate the efficiency gap which is the difference between votes wasted by either party expressed as a percentage of total votes cast. A large efficiency gap can be a sign of potential gerrymandering. However, there may be a better way, using geometry to prove gerrymandering has occurred. Exposing gerrymandering with computer-generated maps. Gerrymandering is a significant issue in the U.S. electoral system, and computer-generated maps can help identify and expose it. While drawing district boundaries in regular shapes might seem like a solution to the problem, modern mapping software can still skew the results. 
However, computers can produce legally permissible maps without political bias. The challenge is creating an ensemble, or a set of randomly generated maps, to identify the best outcome. A group of professors from Duke University created an ensemble of 19,184 maps of Wisconsin and analyzed the results of the 2012 Wisconsin State Assembly election, which proved gerrymandering occurred. Though the ensemble method hasn't stopped gerrymandering, the more we talk about it, the more likely we are to end it. As you wrap up your exploration of the hidden geometry in our world through Jordan Ellenberg's intriguing work, you will have gained valuable insights into how geometry shapes our understanding of questions big and small. From the whimsical to the serious, Ellenberg guides you through the mathematics behind actors, games, pandemics, and even politics, proving that geometry is indeed a versatile and essential language for making sense of our world. You'll come to appreciate the profound implications of geometry, as it offers not only a foundation for theoretical understanding, but also practical tools for navigating complex challenges in a multitude of fields.